Genetic studies on Jews are part of the population genetics discipline and are used to better understand the chronology of migration provided by research in other fields, such as history, archaeology, linguistics, and paleontology. These studies investigate the origins of various Jewish populations today. In particular, they investigate whether there is a common genetic heritage among various Jewish populations. Studies of autosomal DNA, which look at the entire DNA mixture, show that Jewish populations have tended to form relatively closely related groups in independent communities with most in a community sharing significant ancestry. For populations of the Jewish diaspora, the genetic composition of Ashkenazi, Sephardi, and Mizrahi Jewish populations show significant amounts of shared Middle Eastern ancestry. According to Behar and colleagues 2010, this is consistent with a historical formulation of the Jewish people as descending from ancient Hebrew and Israelites of the Levant, and the dispersion of the people of ancient Israel throughout the Old World. Jews living in the North African, Italian, and Iberian regions show variable frequencies of admixture with the historical non-Jewish population along the maternal lines. In the case of Ashkenazi and Sephardi Jews, in particular Moroccan Jews, who are closely related, the source of non-Jewish admixture is mainly Southern European. Behar and colleagues have remarked on an especially close relationship between Ashkenazi Jews and modern Italians. Some studies show that the Bene Israel and Cochin Jews of India, and the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, while more closely resembling the local populations of their native countries, have some ancient Jewish descent. Topic. Recent studies Recent studies have been conducted on a large number of genes, homologous chromosomes or autosomes all chromosomes except chromosomes X and Y. A 2009 study was able to genetically identify individuals with full or partial Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. In August 2012, Dr. Harry Oster in his book Legacy, A Genetic History of the Jewish People, summarized his and other work in genetics of the last 20 years, and concluded that all major Jewish groups share a common Middle Eastern origin. Oster also refuted the Hazar theory of Ashkenazi ancestry. Citing autosomal DNA studies, Nicholas Wade estimates that Ashkenazic and Sephardic Jews have roughly 30% European ancestry, with most of the rest from the Middle East. He further noticed that, "...the two communities seem very similar to each other genetically, which is unexpected because they have been separated for so long." Concerning this relationship he points to Atzman's conclusions that, the shared genetic elements suggest that members of any Jewish community are related to one another as closely as our fourth or fifth cousins in a large population, which is about ten times higher than the relationship between two people chosen at random off the streets of New York City." Concerning North African Jews, autosomal genetic analysis in 2012 revealed that North African Jews are genetically close to European Jews. This finding shows that North African Jews date to Biblical-era Israel, and are not largely the descendants of natives who converted to Judaism. Why DNA studies examine various paternal lineages of modern Jewish populations. Such studies tend to imply a small number of founders in an old population whose members parted and followed different migration paths. In most Jewish populations, these male line ancestors appear to have been mainly Middle Eastern. For example, Ashkenazi Jews share more common paternal lineages with other Jewish and Middle Eastern groups than with non-Jewish populations in areas where Jews lived in Eastern Europe, Germany and the French Rhine Valley. This is consistent with Jewish traditions in placing most Jewish paternal origins in the region of the Middle East. A study conducted in 2013 found no evidence of a Hazar origin for Ashkenazi Jews and suggested that Ashkenazi Jews share the greatest genetic ancestry with other Jewish populations, and among non-Jewish populations, with groups from Europe and the Middle East. No particular similarity of Ashkenazi Jews with populations from the Caucasus is evident, particularly with the populations that most closely represent the Hazar region. 
In this view, analysis of Ashkenazi Jews together with a large sample from the region of the Hazar Khaganate would corroborate earlier results that Ashkenazi Jews derive their ancestry primarily from populations of the Middle East and Europe, that they possess considerable shared ancestry with other Jewish populations, and that there is no indication of a significant genetic contribution either from within or from north of the Caucasus region. In 2016, together with R. Das, P. Wexler and M. Peruznia, Elhaik advanced the view that the first Ashkenazi populations to speak the Yiddish language came from areas near four villages in eastern Turkey along the Silk Road whose names derived from the word Ashkenaz, arguing that Iranian, Greek, Turkish, and Slav populations converted on that travel route before moving to Khazaria, where a small-scale conversion took place. The study was dismissed by Sergio della Pergola as a falsification noting it failed to include Jewish groups such as the Atakam and Sephardic Jews, to whom Ashkenazi Jews are closely related genetically. Shaul Stampfer, a professor of Soviet and East European Jewry at the Hebrew University, called Elhaik's research, "...basically nonsense." Elhaik replied that the DNA of non-Ashkenazic Jews would not affect the origin of DNA hypothesized for the former. Professor. David Katz, founder of Vilnius University's Yiddish Institute criticized the study's linguistic analysis. The authors have melded accurate but contextually meaningless genetic correlations with laughable linguistic theories that now proliferate, sadly, as a consequence of a much weakened Yiddish academic environment internationally. There is not a single word or sound in Yiddish that comes from Iranian or Turkish. In joint study published in 2016 by Genome Biology and Evolution, Pavel Fliegentiv from Department of Biology and Ecology, Faculty of Science, University of Ostrava, Czech Republic, A.A. Karkovich Institute of Linguistics, Russian Academy of Sciences, Moscow, Mark G. Thomas from Research Department of Genetics, Evolution and Environment, University College London, UK, Valentina Fedchenko from St. Petersburg State University, and George Starostin from Russian State University for the Humanities, dismissed both the genetic and linguistic components of Elhaik et al. study arguing that GPS is a provenancing tool suited to inferring the geographic region where a modern and recently unadmixed genome is most likely to arise, but is hardly suitable for admixed populations and for tracing ancestry up to 1,000 years before present, as its authors have previously claimed. Moreover, all methods of historical linguistics concur that Yiddish is a Germanic language, with no reliable evidence for Slavic, Iranian, or Turkic substrata. Quote, the authors concluded. In our view, Das and co-authors have attempted to fit together a marginal and unsupported interpretation of the linguistic data with a genetic provenancing approach, GPS, that is at best only suited to inferring the most likely geographic location of modern and relatively unadmixed genomes, and tells nothing of population history and origin. The authors, in a non-peer-reviewed response, defended the methodological adequacy of their approach. In 2016 Elhaik having reviewed the literature searching for a Judish typus argued that there is no genomic hallmark for Jewishness. While he allows that in the future it is possible that a Jewish marker may turn up, so far, in his view, Jewishness turns out to be socially defined a socionome, determined by non-genetic factors. On 31 October 2016 a corrigendum to the initial GPS paper by Elhaik et al. 2014 was published in Nature Communications. The corrigendum included a conflict of interest statement in which one of the authors Tatiana Tatarinova acknowledged a relationship with prosapia genetics. The GPS tool, remained freely available on the lab website of Dr. Tatiana Tatarinova, but as of December 2016 the link is broken. In 2017, the same authors further supported a non-Levantine origin of Ashkenazi Jews claiming that Overall, the combined results of linguistics study and GPS tool are in a strong agreement with the predictions of the irano turco slavic hypothesis and rule out an ancient Levantine origin for AJs, which is predominant among modern-day Levantine populations e.g., Bedouin and Palestinians. Elhaik's and Das' work was among others, strongly criticized by Marian Aptrut from University of Dusseldorf, who in the study published by Genome Biology and Evolution claimed that 
Das et al. create a narrative based on genetic, philological and historical research and state that the findings of the three disciplines support each other. Incomplete and unreliable data from times when people were not counted regardless of sex, age, religion or financial or social status on the one hand, and the dearth of linguistic evidence predating the 15th century on the other, leave much room for conjecture and speculation. Linguistic evidence, however, does not support the theory that Yiddish is a Slavic language, and textual sources belie the thesis that the name Ashkenaz was brought to Eastern Europe directly from a region in the Near East. Although the focus and methods of research may be different in the humanities and the sciences, scholars should try to account for all evidence and observations, regardless of the field of research. Seen from the standpoint of the humanities, certain aspects of the article by Das et al. fall short of established standards. Topic. Maternal lineages The maternal lineages of Jewish populations, studied by looking at mitochondrial DNA, are generally more heterogeneous. Scholars such as Harry Oster and Raphael Falk believe this may indicate that many Jewish males found new mates from European and other communities in the places where they migrated in the diaspora after fleeing ancient Israel. Two studies in 2006 and 2008 suggested that about 40% of Ashkenazi Jews originate maternally from just four female founders, which are likely of Near Eastern origin, while the populations of Sephardi and Mizrahi Jewish communities showed no evidence for a narrow founder effect. With the exception of Ethiopian Jews and Indian Jews, it has been argued that all of the various Jewish populations have components of mitochondrial genomes that were of Middle Eastern origin. In 2013, however, Richards et al. published work suggesting that an overwhelming majority of Ashkenazi Jewish maternal ancestry, estimated at 80% of Ashkenazi maternal ancestry comes from women indigenous to Europe, and only 8% from the Near East, with the rest uncertain suggesting that Jewish males migrated to Europe and took new wives from the local population, and converted them to Judaism. Another study by Eva Fernandez and her colleagues argues that the K lineages claimed to be European in origin by Richards et al., in Ashkenazi Jews might have an ancient Near Eastern source. Topic. Paternal lineage, Y chromosome In 1992 G. Lucott and F. David were the first genetic researchers to have documented a common paternal genetic heritage between Sephardi and Ashkenazi Jews. Another study published just a year later suggested the Middle Eastern origin of Jewish paternal lineages. In 2000, M. Hammer, et al., conducted a study on 1371 men and definitively established that part of the paternal gene pool of Jewish communities in Europe, North Africa, and Middle East came from a common Middle East ancestral population. They suggested that most Jewish communities in the diaspora remained relatively isolated and endogamous compared to non Jewish neighbor populations. In a study of Israeli Jews and Palestinian Muslim Arabs, more than 70% of the Jewish men and 82% of the Arab men whose DNA was studied had inherited their Y chromosomes from the same paternal ancestors, who lived in the region within the last few thousand years. Our recent study of high-resolution microsatellite haplotypes demonstrated that a substantial portion of Y chromosomes of Jews and of Palestinian Muslim Arabs belonged to the same chromosome pool." In relation to the region of the Fertile Crescent, the same study noted in comparison with data available from other relevant populations in the region, Jews were found to be more closely related to groups in the north of the Fertile Crescent Kurds, Turks, and Armenians than to their Arab neighbors. Approximately 35% to 43% of Jewish men are in the paternal line known as haplogroup J and its sub-haplogroups. This haplogroup is particularly present in the Middle East, Southern Europe, and Northern Africa. 15-30% are in haplogroup E1B1B, or EM35, and its sub-haplogroups. Why DNA of Ashkenazi Jews The Y chromosome of most Ashkenazi and Sephardi Jews contains mutations that are common among Middle Eastern peoples, but uncommon in the general European population, according to a study of haplotypes of the Y chromosome by Michael Hammer, Harry Oster and others, published in 2000. 
According to Hammer et al., this suggests that the paternal lineages of Ashkenazi Jews could be traced mostly to the Middle East. Hammer et al. add that, "...diaspora Jews from Europe, Northwest Africa, and the Near East resemble each other more closely than they resemble their non-Jewish neighbors." In addition, the authors have found that the Jewish cluster was interspersed with the Palestinian and Syrian populations, whereas the other Middle Eastern non-Jewish populations Saudi Arabians, Lebanese, and Druze closely surrounded it. Of the Jewish populations in this cluster, the Ashkenazim were closest to South European populations specifically the Greeks and also to the Turks. The study estimated that Ashkenazi Jews are descended on their paternal side from a core population of approximately 20,000 Jews that migrated from Italy into the rest of Europe over the course of the first millennium, and that, "...all European Jews seem connected on the order of fourth or fifth cousins." The estimated cumulative total male genetic admixture amongst Ashkenazim was, according to Hammer et al., "...very similar to Matulski's average estimate of 12.5%. This could be the result, for example, of as little as 0.5% per generation, over an estimated 80 generations. According to Hammer et al., such figures indicated that there had been a relatively minor contribution to Ashkenazi paternal lineages by converts to Judaism and non-Jews. These figures, however, were based on a limited range of paternal haplogroups assumed to have originated in Europe. When potentially European haplogroups were included in the analysis, the estimated admixture increased to 23% plus or minus 7%. The frequency of haplogroup R1b in the Ashkenazim population is similar to the frequency of R1b in Middle Eastern populations. This is significant, because R1b is also the most haplogroup amongst non-Jewish males in Western Europe. That is the commonness of nominally Middle Eastern subclades of R1b amongst Ashkenazim tends to minimize the Western European contribution to the approximately 10% of R1b found amongst Ashkenazim. A large study by Behar et al. 2004 of Ashkenazi Jews records a percentage of 5-8% European contribution to the Ashkenazi paternal gene pool. In the words of Behar, because haplogroups RM17 R1A and RP25 R1B are present in non-Ashkenazi Jewish populations e.g. at 4% and 10% respectively and in non-Jewish near eastern populations e.g. at 7% and 11% respectively Hammer et al. 2000 Nabel et al. 2001 it is likely that they were also present at low frequency in the AJ Ashkenazi Jewish founding population. The admixture analysis shown in Table 6 suggests that 5% to 8% of the Ashkenazi gene pool is, indeed, comprised of Y chromosomes that may have intergressed from non-Jewish European populations. For G. Lukot et al., the R1b frequency is about 11%. In 2004, when the calculation is made excluding Jews from Netherlands the R1b rate is 5% plus or minus 11.6%. Two studies by Nabel et al., in 2001 and 2005, based on Y-chromosome polymorphic markers, suggested that Ashkenazi Jews are more closely related to other Jewish and Middle Eastern groups than to their host populations in Europe defined in the using Eastern European, German, and French Rhine Valley populations. Ashkenazi, Sephardic, and Kurdish Jews were all very closely related to the populations of the Fertile Crescent, even closer than to Arabs. The study speculated that the ancestors of the Arab populations of the Levant might have diverged due to mixing with migrants from the Arabian Peninsula. However, 11.5% of male Ashkenazim, and more specifically 50% of the Levites while 1.7% of the Kahanim, were found to belong to R1A1A RM17, the dominant Y-chromosome haplogroup in Eastern European populations. They hypothesized that these chromosomes could reflect low-level gene flow from surrounding Eastern European populations, or, alternatively, that both the Ashkenazi Jews with R1A1A RM17, and to a much greater extent Eastern European populations in general, might partly be descendants of Khazars. They concluded, 
However, if the R1A1 A RM17 chromosomes in Ashkenazi Jews do indeed represent the vestiges of the mysterious Khazars then, according to our data, this contribution was limited to either a single founder or a few closely related men, and does not exceed approximately 12% of the present-day Ashkenazim. This hypothesis is also supported by the D. Goldstein in his book Jacob's Legacy, A Genetic View of Jewish History. However, Feyerman 2008 states that, "...external low-level gene flow of possible Eastern European origin has been shown in Ashkenazim but no evidence of a hypothetical Khazar's contribution to the Ashkenazi gene pool has ever been found." On the other hand, a 2017 study, concentrating on the Ashkenazi Levites where the proportion reaches 50%, while signaling that there's a rich variation of haplogroup R1A outside of Europe which is phylogenetically separate from the typically European R1A branches." Precises that the particular R1A Y2619 subclade testifies for a local origin, and that the Middle Eastern origin of the Ashkenazi Levite lineage based on what was previously a relatively limited number of reported samples, can now be considered firmly validated. Furthermore, 7% of Ashkenazi Jews have the haplogroup G2C, which is found mainly among the Pashtuns and on a lower scale among all major Jewish groups, Palestinians, Syrians, and Lebanese. Behar et al. suggest that those haplogroups are minor Ashkenazi founding lineages. Among Ashkenazi Jews, Jews of Netherlands seem to have a particular haplogroups distribution since nearly one quarter of them have the haplogroup R1b1, RP25, in particular sub haplogroup R1b1b2, RM269, which is characteristic of Western European populations. Ashkenazi men show low Y-DNA diversity within each major haplogroup, meaning that compared to the size of the modern population, it seems there were once a relatively small number of men having children. This possibly results from a series of founder events and high rates of endogamy within Europe. Despite Ashkenazi Jews representing a recently founded population in Europe, founding effects suggest that they probably derived from a large and diverse ancestral source population in the Middle East, who may have been larger than the source population from which the indigenous Europeans derived. Topic. Why DNA of Sephardi Jews? The term, Sephardi, refers to significantly different populations from one study to another, so much care must be taken when interpreting and comparing data from different studies and research. On the one hand, the term, Sephardi, is used in some studies in a very restrictive meaning, only referring to Jews with attested family origins to Jews exiled from Iberia Spain and Portugal wherever they may have ended up settling and who traditionally spoke a form of Judeo-Spanish. At the opposite end of the spectrum, the term, Sephardi, is used by other studies to designate all non-Ashkenazi populations from predominantly Muslim lands, such as the Jews indigenous to North Africa and Jews from the Greater Middle East who do not descended from Spanish or Portuguese Jewish exiles although Ethiopian Jews, Yemenite Jews, and Kurdish Jews, are always excluded from any definition of Sephardi in genetic studies. Between these two extremes of defining the Sephardi population, all kinds of variations in results and conclusions exist. Investigations made by Nabel et al. on the genetic relationships among Ashkenazi Jews, Kurdish and Sephardi North Africa, Turkey, Iberian Peninsula, Iraq and Syria indicate that Jews are more genetically similar to groups in Northern Fertile Crescent Kurds, Turks and Armenians than their Arab neighbors. Considering the timing of this origin, the study found that the common genetic Middle Eastern background of Jewish populations predates the ethnogenesis in the region and concludes that the Y chromosome pool of Jews is an integral part of the genetic landscape of Middle East. Topic: Y DNA of Jews from North Africa. The largest study to date on the Jews of North Africa has been led by Gerard Lucot et al. in 2003. This study showed that the Jews of North Africa showed frequencies of their paternal haplotypes almost equal to those of the Lebanese and Palestinian non-Jews. The authors also compared the distribution of haplotypes of Jews from North Africa with Sephardi Jews and Ashkenazi Jews and found significant differences between the Ashkenazim and the other two groups. 
The Jewish community of the island of Jerba in Tunisia is of special interest. Tradition traces this community's origins back to the time of the destruction of the first temple. Two studies have attempted to test this hypothesis first by G. Lucat et al., from 1993, the second of F. Manny et al., of 2005. They also conclude that the Jews of Jerba's paternal gene pool is different from the Arabs and Berbers of the island. For the first 77.5% of samples tested are of haplotype 8, probably similar to the J haplogroup according Lucat. The second shows that 100% of the samples are of haplogroup J. The second suggests that it is unlikely that the majority of this community comes from an ancient colonization of the island, while for Lucat it is unclear whether this high frequency is really an ancient relationship. These studies therefore suggest that the paternal lineage of North African Jews comes predominantly from the Middle East with a minority contribution of African lineages, probably Berbers. Why DNA of Portuguese Jews A recent study by Inés Nogueiro et al., July 2009, on the Jews of northeastern Portugal, region of Tras os Montes, showed that their paternal lines consisted of 35.2% lineages more typical of Europe, R 31.7%, I 3.5%, and 64.8% lineages more typical of the Near East than Europe, E 1B 1B 8.7%, G 3.5%, J 36.8%, T 15.8% and consequently, the Portuguese Jews of this region were genetically closer to other Jewish populations than to Portuguese non-Jews. Why DNA of Oriental Jews? Lukat et al. 2003 study found that Oriental, Sephardic, Ashkenazic Jews and Lebanese and Palestinians seem to be similar in their Y haplotype patterns, both with regard to the haplotype distributions and the ancestral haplotype 8 frequencies." The authors stated in their findings that these results confirm similarities in the Y haplotype frequencies of this Near Eastern populations, sharing a common geographic origin. Why DNA of Roman Jews Hammer et al. maintained that the paternal lines of Jews from Rome were close to those of Ashkenazi Jews. They also assert that these mostly originated from the Middle East. Why DNA of Kurdish Jews In the article by Nabel et al., the authors show that Kurdish and Sephardi Jews have indistinguishable paternal genetic heritage. The study shows that mixtures between Kurdish Jews and their Muslim hosts are negligible and that Kurdish Jews are closer to other Jewish groups than to their long-term host population. Hammer had already shown the strong correlation between the genetic heritage of Jews from North Africa with Kurdish Jews. Kurdish Jews Judeo-Aramaic Central Semitic Kurdistan Sample Size 1999-19.2% Kurdish Jews Judeo-Aramaic Central Semitic Kurdistan Sample Size 9 50ths 18% 10% T1A1A1A1A1A1P77 and 8% T1A1L162 Haplogroup T Y-DNA Y-DNA of the Jews of Yemen The studies of Shen and Hammer et al. show that the paternal genes of Yemenite Jews are very similar to that of other Jewish populations. Y haplogroups A3B2, E3B3A, E3B1, E3B1B, J1A, J2E, R1B10 and the lowest frequency found was haplogroup T 294ths 2.1% in one sample. Why DNA of Mountain Jews? A 2002 study by geneticist Dror Rosengarten found that the paternal haplotypes of Mountain Jews were shared with other Jewish communities and were consistent with a Mediterranean origin. A 2016 study by Karafet et al. found, with a sample of 17, 11. 8% of mountain Jewish men tested in Dagestan's Durbensky district to belong to haplogroup TP77. Why DNA of Jews from Ethiopia? 
A study of Lukat and Smets has shown that the genetic father of Beta Israel Ethiopian Jews was close to the Ethiopian non-Jewish populations. This is consistent with the theory that Beta Israel are descendants of ancient inhabitants of Ethiopia, not the Middle East. Hammer et al. in 2000 and the team of Shen in 2004 arrive at similar conclusions, namely a genetic differentiation in other people in the north of Ethiopia, which probably indicates a conversion of local populations. A 2010 study by Behar et al. on the genome-wide structure of Jews observed that the Beta Israel had similar levels of the Middle Eastern genetic clusters as the also Semitic-speaking Ethiopian non-Jewish Tigrayans and Amharas. However, compared to the Cushitic-speaking non-Jewish Ethiopian Oromos, who are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia, the Beta Israel had higher levels of Middle Eastern admixture. Why DNA of Indian Jews? Genetic analysis shows that the Bene Israel of India cluster with the indigenous populations of western India, but do have a clear paternal link to the populations of the Levant. A recent more detailed study on Indian Jews has reported that the paternal ancestry of Indian Jews is composed of Middle East specific haplogroups e, G, J, X, J2, and I, as well as common South Asian haplogroups R1A, H, LM11, R2. Topic. Priestly families Topic. Kahanam Nephrologist Dr. Carl Skorecki decided to analyze the Kahanam to see if they were the descendants of one man, in which case they should have a set of common genetic markers. To test this hypothesis, he contacted Dr. Michael Hammer of the University of Arizona, a researcher in molecular genetics and a pioneer in research on chromosomes. Their article, published in Nature in 1997, has had some impact. A set of special markers called Cohen modal haplotype or CMH was defined as one which is more likely to be present in the Kahanam, defined as contemporary Jews named Cohen or a derivative, and it was proposed that this results from a common descent from the ancient priestly lineage than from the Jewish population in general. But, subsequent studies showed that the number of genetic markers used and the number of samples of people saying Cohen were not big enough. The last study, conducted in 2009 by Hammer and Behar et al., says 20 of the 21 Cohen haplogroups have no single common young haplogroup. Five haplogroups comprise 79.5% of all haplogroups of Cohen. Among these first five haplogroups, JP58 or J1E accounts for 46.1% of Cohen and the second major haplogroup, JM410 or J2A accounts for 14.4%. Hammer and Behar have redefined an extended CMH haplotype as determined by a set of 12 markers and having as background haplogroup determining the most important lines J1E 46.1%. This haplotype is absent among non-Jews in 2099 analyzed in the study. It appeared there would be a 3,000 plus or minus 1,000 years. This study nevertheless confirms that the current Cohen lineage descended from a small number of paternal ancestors. In the summary of their findings the authors concluded that our estimates of the coalescence time also lend support to the hypothesis that the extended CMH represents a unique founding lineage of the ancient Hebrews that has been paternally inherited along with the Jewish priesthood. Levitz <inaudible> 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 A 2003 study of the Y chromosome by Behar et al. pointed to multiple origins for Ashkenazi Levites, a priestly class who comprise approximately 4% of Ashkenazi Jews. It found that haplogroup R1A1A RM17, which is uncommon in the Middle East or among Sephardi Jews, but dominant in Eastern Europe, is present in over 50% of Ashkenazi Levites, while the rest of Ashkenazi Levites' paternal lineage is of apparent Middle Eastern origin. Behar suggested a founding event, probably involving one or very few European men, occurring at a time close to the initial formation and settlement of the Ashkenazi community as a possible explanation. 
Nabal, Behar, and Goldstein speculated that this may indicate a Hazar origin. A 2013 study by Rootsi et al. found that R1A M582, the specific subclade of R1A to which all sampled Ashkenazi Levites with R1A belonged, was completely absent of a sample of 922 Eastern Europeans and was only found in one of the 2,164 samples from the Caucasus, while it made up 33.8% of non Levite Ashkenazi R1A and was also found in 5. 0.9% of Near Easterners bearing R1A. The clade, the less represented in Near Easterners, was more diverse among them than among Ashkenazi Jews. Rutsi et al. argued this supports a Near Eastern Hebrew origin for the paternal lineage R1A present among Ashkenazi Levites. R1A M582 was also found among different Iranian populations, among Kurds from Cilician Anatolia and Kazakhstan, and among non Ashkenazi Jews. Previous Y chromosome studies have demonstrated that Ashkenazi Levites, members of a paternally inherited Jewish priestly caste, display a distinctive founder event within R1A, the most prevalent Y chromosome haplogroup in Eastern Europe. Here we report the analysis of 16 whole R1 sequences and show that a set of 19 unique nucleotide substitutions defines the Ashkenazi R1A lineage. While our survey of one of these, M582, in 2,834 R1A samples reveals its absence in 922 Eastern Europeans, we show it is present in all sampled R1A Ashkenazi Levites, as well as in 33.8% of other R1A Ashkenazi Jewish males and 5.9% of 303 R1A Near Eastern males, where it shows considerably higher diversity. Moreover, the M582 lineage also occurs at low frequencies in non-Ashkenazi Jewish populations. In contrast to the previously suggested Eastern European origin for Ashkenazi Levites, the current data are indicative of a geographic source of the Levite founder lineage in the Near East and its likely presence among pre-diaspora Hebrews. Maternal line, mitochondrial DNA Studies of mitochondrial DNA of Jewish populations are more recent and are still debatable. According to Thomas et al., in 2002, a number of Jewish communities reveal direct line maternal ancestry originating from a few women. This was seen in independently founded communities in different geographic areas. What they shared was limited genetic additions later on the female side. Together, this is described as the founder effect. Those same communities had diversity in the male lines that was similar to the non-Jewish population, reflecting on previous mtDNA studies carried out by Behar, Atzman et al., conclude that all major Jewish population groups are showing evidence for founder females of Middle Eastern origin with coalescence times greater than 2,000 years. A 2013 study, based on a much larger sample base, drew differing conclusions, namely, that the Mount DNA of Ashkenazi Jews originated among Southern European women, where diaspora communities had been established centuries before the fall of the Second Temple in 70 CE. A 2014 study by Fernandez et al. found that Ashkenazi Jews display a frequency of haplogroup K which suggests an ancient Near Eastern origin, stating that this observation clearly contradicts the results of the study led by Richards which suggested a predominantly European origin for the Ashkenazi community's maternal lines. However, the authors of the 2014 study also state that definitively answering the question of whether this group was of Jewish origin rather than the result of a Neolithic migration to Europe would require the genotyping of the complete mtDNA in ancient Near Eastern populations. <laughs> Mount DNA of Ashkenazi Jews In 2004, Behar el al found that approximately 32% of Ashkenazi Jews belong to the mitochondrial haplogroup K, which points to a genetic bottleneck having taken place some 100 generations prior. Haplogroup K itself is thought to have originated in Western Asia some 12,000 years ago. A 2006 study by Behar et al., based on high-resolution analysis of haplogroup K mtDNA, suggested that about 40% of the current Ashkenazi population is descended matrilineally from just four women, or founder lineages, likely of mixed European and Middle Eastern origin. 
They concluded that these founder lineages may have originated in the Middle East in the 1st and 2nd centuries CE, and later underwent expansion in Europe. Moreover, a maternal line, sister, was found among the Jews of Portugal, North Africa, France, and Italy. They wrote, Both the extent and location of the maternal ancestral deem from which the Ashkenazi Jewry arose remain obscure. Here, using complete sequences of the maternally inherited mitochondrial DNA MTDNA, we show that close to one half of Ashkenazi Jews, estimated at 8 million people, can be traced back to only four women carrying distinct MTDNAs that are virtually absent in other populations, with the important exception of low frequencies among non-Ashkenazi Jews. We conclude that four founding MTDNAs, likely of Near Eastern ancestry, underwent major expansions in Europe within the past millennium. A 2007 study by J. Feder et al. confirmed the hypothesis of the founding of non-European origin among the maternal lines. Their study did not address the geographical origin of Ashkenazim and therefore does not explicitly confirm the origin Levantine of these founders. This study revealed a significant divergence in total haplogroup distribution between the Ashkenazi Jewish populations and their European host populations, namely Russians, Poles and Germans. They concluded that, regarding mtDNAs, the differences between Jews and non-Jews are far larger than those observed among the Jewish communities. The study also found that, "...the differences between the Jewish communities can be overlooked when non-Jews are included in the comparisons." It supported previous interpretations that, in the direct maternal line, there was little or no gene flow from the local non-Jewish communities in Poland and Russia to the Jewish communities in these countries. Considering Ashkenazi Jews, Atzman citing Behar above, states that beyond four founder mitochondrial haplogroups of possible Middle Eastern origins which comprise approximately 40% of Ashkenazi Jewish mtDNA, the remainder of the mtDNA falls into other haplogroups, many of European origin. He noted that beyond Ashkenazi Jews Evidence for founder females of Middle Eastern origin has been observed in other Jewish populations based on non-overlapping mitochondrial haplotypes with coalescence times greater than 2,000 years. A 2013 study at the University of Huddersfield, led by Professor Martin B. Richards, concluded that 65% to 81% of Ashkenazi Mount DNA is European in origin, including all four founding mothers, and that most of the remaining lineages are also European. The results were published in Nature Communications in October 2013. The team analyzed about 2,500 complete and 28,000 partial mount DNA genomes of mostly non-Jews, and 836 partial mount DNA genomes of Ashkenazi Jews. The study claims that only 8% of Ashkenazi mount DNA could be identified as Middle Eastern in origin, with the origin of the rest being unclear, they wrote, if we allow for the possibility that K1A9 and N1B2 might have a Near Eastern source, then we can estimate the overall fraction of European maternal ancestry at approximately 65%. Given the strength of the case for even these founders having a European source, however, our best estimate is to assign approximately 81% of Ashkenazi lineages to a European source, approximately 8% to the Near East and approximately 1% further to the East in Asia, with approximately 10% remaining ambiguous. Thus at least two-thirds and most likely more than four-fifths of Ashkenazi maternal lineages have a European ancestry. Regarding the origin of Ashkenazi admixture, the analyses suggest that the first major wave of assimilation probably took place in Mediterranean Europe, most likely in Southern Europe, with substantial further assimilation of minor founders in West, Central Europe. According to Richards, who acknowledged past research showing that Ashkenazi Jews' paternal origins are largely from the Middle East, the most likely explanation is that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from Middle Eastern men who moved to Europe, and married local women who they converted to Judaism. The authors found, "...less evidence for assimilation in Eastern Europe, and almost none for a source in the North Caucasus, Chuvashia, as would be predicted by the Hazar hypothesis." The study was criticized by geneticist Doran Behar, who stated that while the mount DNA of Ashkenazi Jews is of mixed Middle Eastern and European origins, the deepest maternal roots of Ashkenazi Jews are not European. Harry Oster said Richard's study seemed reasonable, and corresponded to the known facts of Jewish history. 
Carl Skorecki of the Rambam Health Care Campus stated that there were serious flaws of phylogenetic analysis. Both Behar and Skorecki claim that the mount DNA used in the study did not represent the full spectrum of mitochondrial diversity. Iran Elhaik, a geneticist at the University of Sheffield, too, argues that the evidence ruled out a Near Eastern origin for many Ashkenazi mitochondrial lineages but he challenged the conclusion that a Khazarian contribution is absent. David B. Goldstein, the Duke University geneticist who first found similarities between the founding mothers of Ashkenazi Jewry and European populations, said that, although Richard's analysis was well done and could be right, the estimate that 80% of Ashkenazi Jewish mount DNA is European was not statistically justified given the random rise and fall of mitochondrial DNA lineages. Geneticist Antonio Toroni of the University of Pavia found the conclusions very convincing, adding that recent studies of cell nucleus DNA also show a very close similarity between Ashkenazi Jews and Italians. Diaspora communities were established in Rome and in Southern Europe centuries before the fall of the Second Temple in 70 CEA 2014 study by Fernandez et al. found that Ashkenazi Jews display a frequency of haplogroup K which suggests ancient Middle Eastern origins, stating that this observation clearly contradicts the results of the study led by Richards which suggested a predominantly European origin for the Ashkenazi community's maternal line. However, the authors also state that definitively answering the question of whether this group was of Jewish origin rather than the result of a Neolithic migration to Europe would require the genotyping of the complete mtDNA in ancient Near Eastern populations. On the study by Richards, According to that work the majority of the Ashkenazi mtDNA lineages can be assigned to three major founders within haplogroup K 31% of their total lineages, K1A1B1A, K1A9 and K2A2. The absence of characteristic mutations within the control region in the PPNBK haplotypes allow discarding them as members of either sub-clades K1A1B1A or K2A2, both representing a 79% of total Ashkenazi K lineages. However, without a high-resolution typing of the mtDNA coding region it cannot be excluded that the PPNBK lineages belong to the third sub-cluster K1A9 20% of Ashkenazi K lineages. Moreover, in the light of the evidence presented here of a loss of lineages in the Near East since Neolithic times, the absence of Ashkenazi mtDNA founder clades in the Near East should not be taken as a definitive argument for its absence in the past. The genotyping of the complete mtDNA in ancient Near Eastern populations would be required to fully answer this question and it will undoubtedly add resolution to the patterns detected in modern populations in this and other studies. Topic. Mount DNA of Jews from North Africa Analysis of mitochondrial DNA of the Jewish populations of North Africa Morocco, Tunisia, Libya was the subject of further detailed study in 2008 by Doran Behar et al. The analysis concludes that Jews from this region do not share the haplogroups of the mitochondrial DNA haplogroups M1 and U6 that are typical of the North African Berber and Arab populations. Similarly, while the frequency of haplogroups L, associated with sub-Saharan Africa, are present in approximately 20-25% at the Berber populations studied, these haplogroups are only present in 1.3%, 2.7% and 3.6% respectively of Jews from Morocco, Tunisia and Libya. Behar et al. conclude that it is unlikely that North African Jews have significant Arab, or Berber admixture consistent with social restrictions imposed by religious restrictions", or endogamy. This study also found genetic similarities between the Ashkenazi and North African Jews of European mitochondrial DNA pools, but differences between both of these of the diaspora and Jews from the Middle East. <laughs> Mount DNA of Jews from the Iberian Peninsula The data Mount DNA recovered by D. Behar et al. were from a community descended from crypto-Jews located in the village of Belmonte in Portugal. Because of the small size of the sample and the circumstances of the community having been isolated for so long, it is not possible to generalize the findings to the entire Iberian Peninsula. <laughs> Mount DNA of Jews from Iraq 
According to the 2008 study by Behar, 43% of Iraqi Jews are descended from five women. Topic: <laughs> Mount DNA of Jews from Libya. According to Behar, 39.8% of the mtDNA of Libyan Jews could be related to one woman carrying the X2E1A1A lineage. Topic: <laughs> Mount DNA of Jews from Tunisia. Behar's study found that 43% of Tunisian Jews are descended from four women along their maternal lines. Topic. Mount DNA of Jews from Ethiopia The results are similar to those of the male population, namely, genetic characteristics identical to those of surrounding populations. Topic. Mount DNA of the Jews of Turkey Mount DNA of the Jews of Turkey and does not include to a large extent Mount DNA lineages typical of West Asia. An Iberian type lineage has been documented, which is consistent with historical data, i.e., the expulsion of Jews from the Iberian Peninsula and their resettlement in Ottoman lands. Topic. Mount DNA of the Jews of Georgia According to the study of G. Thomas et al., 51% of Georgian Jews are descended from a single female. According to Behar, 58% are descended from this female ancestor. Researchers have not determined the origin of this ancestor, but it is known that this woman carried a haplotype, which can be found throughout in large area stretching from the Mediterranean to Iraq and to the Caucasus. Topic. Mount DNA of the Mountain Jews The Mountain Jews showed a striking maternal founding event, with 58.6% of their total mtDNA genetic variation tracing back to one woman from the Levant carrying an mtDNA lineage within HGJ2B. Topic. Mount DNA of Jews from Yemen In a study by Richards et al., the authors suggest that a minor proportion of haplogroup L1 and L3A lineage from sub-Saharan Africa is present among Jews from Yemen. However, these lines occur four times less frequently than among non-Jewish Yemenis. These sub-Saharan haplogroups are virtually absent among Jews from Iraq, Iran and Georgia and do not appear among Ashkenazi Jews. The Jewish population of Yemen also reveals a founder effect. 42% of the direct maternal lines are traceable to five women, four coming from Western Asia, and one from East Africa. Topic. Mount DNA of Bukharan and Persian Jews Genetic studies show that Persian and Bukharan Jews descend from a small number of female ancestors. Topic. Mount DNA of Moroccan Jews Genetic research shows that about 27% of Moroccan Jews descend from one female ancestor. Topic. Mount DNA of Indian Jews According to the study of 2008 by Behar et al., the maternal lineage of some Jews of India has a local origin for the vast majority of the community. The maternal gene pool also includes some minor maternal lineage originating in the area of Iraq, Iran or Italy. Genetic research shows that 41.3% of Bene Israel descend from one female ancestor, who was of indigenous Indian origin. Cochin Jews also have genetic similarities with other Jewish populations, in particular with Yemenite Jews, along with the indigenous populations of India. Topic. Autosomal DNA These studies focus upon autosomal chromosomes, the 22 homologous or autosomes, non -sex chromosomes rather than on the direct paternal or maternal lines. The technology has changed rapidly and so older studies are different in quality to newer ones. 
An initial study conducted in 2001 by Noah Rosenberg and colleagues on six Jewish populations Poland, Libya, Ethiopia, Iraq, Morocco, Yemen and two non-Jewish populations Palestinians and Druze showed that while the eight groups are close, the Jews of Libya have a distinct genetic signature related to their genetic isolation and a possible combination with Berber populations. This same study suggested a close relationship between Jews of Yemen and those of Ethiopia. A 2006 study by Selden et al. used over 5,000 autosomal SNPs to demonstrate European genetic substructure. The results showed a consistent and reproducible distinction between northern and southern European population groups. Most Northern, Central, and Eastern Europeans Finns, Swedes, English, Irish, Germans, and Ukrainians showed greater than 90% in the Northern population group, while most individual participants with Southern European ancestry Italians, Greeks, Portuguese, Spaniards showed greater than 85% in the Southern group. Both Ashkenazi Jews as well as Sephardic Jews showed greater than 85% membership in the Southern group. Referring to the Jews clustering with Southern Europeans, the authors state the results were consistent with a later Mediterranean origin of these ethnic groups. A 2007 study by Bouchet et al. found that Ashkenazi Jews were most closely clustered with Arabic North African populations when compared to the global population of that study. In the European structure analysis, they shared genetic similarities with Greeks and Sicilians, reflecting their East Mediterranean origins. A 2008 study by Price et al. sampled southern Italians, Jews and other Europeans, and isolated the genetic markers that are most accurate for distinguishing between European groups, achieving results comparable to those from genome-wide analyses. It mines much larger datasets more markers and more samples to identify a panel of 300 highly ancestry-informative markers which accurately distinguish not just Northwest and Southeast European, but also Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry from Southern Europeans. A 2008 study by Tien et al. provides an additional example of the same clustering pattern, using samples and markers similar to those in their other study. European population genetic substructure was examined in a diverse set of greater than 1,000 individuals of European descent, each genotyped with greater than 300 KSNPs. Both structure and principal component analyses PCA showed the largest division, principal component PC differentiated northern from southern European ancestry. A second PC further separated Italian, Spanish, and Greek individuals from those of Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry as well as distinguishing among Northern European populations. In separate analyses of Northern European participants, other substructure relationships were discerned showing a west to east gradient. A 2009 study by Goldstein et al. shows that it is possible to predict full Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry with 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity, although it should be noted that the exact dividing line between a Jewish and non Jewish cluster will vary across sample sets, which in practice would reduce the accuracy of the prediction. While the full historical demographic explanations for this distinction remain to be resolved, it is clear that the genomes of individuals with full Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry carry an unambiguous signature of their Jewish heritage, and this seems more likely to be due to their specific Middle Eastern ancestry than to inbreeding. The authors note that there is almost perfect separation along PC1, and, they note that most of the non-Jewish Europeans who are closest to the Jews on this PC are of Italian or Eastern Mediterranean origin. In a 2009 study by Kopelman et al., four Jewish groups, Ashkenazi, Turkish, Moroccan and Tunisian, were found to share a common origin from the Middle East, with more recent admixture that has resulted in intermediate placement of the Jewish populations compared to European and Middle Eastern populations. The authors found that the most similar to the Jewish populations is the Palestinian population. The Tunisian Jews were found to be distinct from three other Jewish populations, which suggests, according to the authors, a greater genetic isolation and or a significant local Berber ancestry, as in the case of Libyan Jews. Concerning the theory of Hazar ancestry in Ashkenazi Jews, the authors found no direct evidence. 
Although they did find genetic similarities between Jews, especially Ashkenazi Jews, and the Adyg people, a group from the Caucasus, whose region was formerly occupied by the Khazars, the Adyg, living on the edge of geographical Europe, are more genetically related to Middle Easterners, including Palestinians, Bedouin, and non Ashkenazi Jews, than to Europeans. Another study of El Hau et al. studied seven groups of Jewish populations with different geographic origin Ashkenazi, Italian, Greek, Turk, Iranian, Iraqi, and Syrian and showed that the individuals all shared a common Middle Eastern background, although they were also genetically distinguishable from each other. In public comments, Harry Oster, the director of the Human Genetics Program at NYU Longoni Medical Center, and one of the authors of this study, concluded, We have shown that Jewishness can be identified through genetic analysis, so the notion of a Jewish people is plausible. A genome-wide genetic study carried out by Need et al., and published in 2009 showed that "...individuals with full Jewish ancestry formed a clearly distinct cluster from those individuals with no Jewish ancestry." The study found that the Jewish cluster examined, fell between that of Middle Eastern and European populations. Reflecting on these findings, the authors concluded. It is clear that the genomes of individuals with full Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry carry an unambiguous signature of their Jewish heritage, and this seems more likely to be due to their specific Middle Eastern ancestry than to inbreeding. The current study extends the analysis of European population genetic structure to include additional Southern European groups and Arab populations. While the Ashkenazi are clearly of southern origin based on both PCA and structure studies, in this analysis of diverse European populations, this group appears to have a unique genotypic pattern that may not reflect geographic origins. In June 2010, Behar et al. shows that most Jewish samples form a remarkably tight subcluster with common genetic origin, that overlies Druze and Cypriot samples but not samples from other Levantine populations or paired diaspora host populations. In contrast, Ethiopian Jews Beta Israel and Indian Jews Bene Israel and Kachini cluster with neighboring autochthonous populations in Ethiopia and western India, respectively, despite a clear paternal link between the Bene Israel and the Levant. The most parsimonious explanation for these observations is a common genetic origin, which is consistent with an historical formulation of the Jewish people as descending from ancient Hebrew and Israelite residents of the Levant." The authors say that the genetic results are concordant with the dispersion of the people of ancient Israel throughout the Old World. Regarding the samples he used, Behar says. Our conclusion favoring common ancestry of Jewish people over recent admixture is further supported by the fact that our sample contains individuals that are known not to be admixed in the most recent one or two generations. A study led by Harry Oster published on June 11, 2010, found close links between Ashkenazi, Sephardi, and Mizrahi Jews, and found them to be genetically distinct from non Jews. In the study, DNA from the blood of 237 Jews and about 2,800 non-Jews was analyzed, and it was determined how closely related they were through IBD. Individuals within the Ashkenazi, Sephardi, and Mizrahi groups shared high levels of IDB, roughly equivalent to that of fourth or fifth cousins. All three groups shared many genetic features, suggesting a common origin dating back more than 2,000 years. The study did find that all three Jewish groups did show various signs of admixture with non-Jews, with the genetic profiles of Ashkenazi Jews indicating between 30% and 60% admixture with Europeans, although they clustered more closely with Sephardi and Mizrahi Jews. In July 2010, Bray et al., using SNP microarray techniques and linkage analysis, confirms that there is a closer relationship between the Ashkenazim and several European populations Tuscans, Italians, and French than between the Ashkenazim and Middle Eastern populations, and that European admixture is considerably higher than previous estimates by studies that use the Y chromosome. Quote, they add their study data. Support the model of a Middle Eastern origin of the Ashkenazim population followed by subsequent admixture with host Europeans or populations more similar to Europeans, and that their data imply that modern Ashkenazi Jews are perhaps more similar to Europeans than modern Middle Easterners. The level of admixture with European population was estimated between 35 and 55 percent. 
The study assumed Druze and Palestinian Arabs populations to represent the reference to world Jewry ancestor genome. With this reference point, the linkage disequilibrium in the Ashkenazi Jewish population was interpreted as matches signs of interbreeding or admixture between Middle Eastern and European populations. Also, in their press release, Bray stated, We were surprised to find evidence that Ashkenazi Jews have higher heterozygosity than Europeans, contradicting the widely held presumption that they have been a largely isolated group. The authors said that their calculations might have overestimated the level of admixture in case that the true Jewish ancestors were genetically closer to Southern Europeans than to Druze and Palestinian Arabs. They predict that using the non-Ashkenazi Jewish diaspora populations as reference for a world Jewry ancestor genome would underestimate the level of admixture, but that However, using the Jewish diaspora populations as the reference Jewish ancestor will naturally underestimate the true level of admixture, as the modern Jewish diaspora has also undergone admixture since their dispersion. Zusman Diskin 2010 argues that based upon the analysis of X chromosome and 17 autosomal markers, Eastern European Jewish populations and Jewish populations from Iran, Iraq, and Yemen do not have the same genetic origins. In particular, concerning Eastern European Jews, he believes the evidence points to a dominant amount of Southern European, and specifically Italian, ancestry, which he argues is probably a result of conversions during the Roman Empire. Concerning the similarity between Sephardi and Ashkenazi, he argues that the reasons are uncertain, but that it is likely to be caused by Sephardic Jews having Mediterranean ancestry also, like the Ashkenazi. Concerning mitochondrial DNA, and particularly Y-DNA, he accepts that there are superficial signs of some Middle Eastern ancestry among Ashkenazi Jews, but he argues that this can be ignored as it is may have come from a small number of ancestors. An autosomal DNA study carried out in 2010 by Atzman et al. examined the origin of Iranian, Iraqi, Syrian, Turkish, Greek, Sephardic, and Ashkenazi Jewish communities. The study compared these Jewish groups with 1043 unrelated individuals from 52 worldwide populations. To further examine the relationship between Jewish communities and European populations, 2,407 European subjects were assigned and divided into 10 groups based on geographic region of their origin. This study confirmed previous findings of shared Middle Eastern origin of the above Jewish groups and found that the genetic connections between the Jewish populations became evident from the frequent IBD across these Jewish groups 63% of all shared segments. Jewish populations shared more and longer segments with one another than with non-Jewish populations, highlighting the commonality of Jewish origin. Among pairs of populations ordered by total sharing, 12 out of the top 20 were pairs of Jewish populations, and None of the top 30 paired a Jewish population with a non-Jewish one. Atzman concludes that, "...each Jewish group demonstrated Middle Eastern ancestry and variable admixture from host population, while the split between Middle Eastern and European, Syrian Jews, calculated by simulation and comparison of length distributions of IBD segments, occurred 100–150 generations ago, which was described as compatible with a historical divide that is reported to have occurred more than 2,500 years ago, as the Jewish community in Iraq and Iran were formed by Jews in the Babylonian and Persian empires during and after Babylonian exile. The main difference between Mizrahi and Ashkenazi, Sephardic Jews was the absence of Southern European components in the former. According to these results, European, Syrian Jewish populations, including the Ashkenazi Jewish community, were formed latter, as a result of the expulsion of Jews from Palestine, during Roman rule. Concerning Ashkenazi Jews, this study found that genetic dates are incompatible with theories that Ashkenazi Jews are for the most part the direct lineal descendants of converted Khazars or Slavs. Citing Behar, Atzman states that Evidence for founder females of Middle Eastern origin has been observed in all Jewish populations based on non-overlapping mitochondrial haplotypes with coalescence times greater than 2,000 years. The closest people related to Jewish groups were the Palestinians, Bedouin, Druze, Greeks, and Italians. 
Regarding this relationship, the authors conclude that these observations are supported by the significant overlap of Y chromosomal haplogroups between Israeli and Palestinian Arabs with Ashkenazi and non Ashkenazi Jewish populations. In 2011, Morjani et al. detected 3% to 5% sub Saharan African ancestry in all eight of the diverse Jewish populations Ashkenazi Jews, Syrian Jews, Iranian Jews, Iraqi Jews, Greek Jews, Turkish Jews, Italian Jews that they analyzed. The timing of this African admixture among all Jewish populations was identical the exact date was not determined, but it was estimated to have taken place between 1,600 to 3,400 years ago. Although African admixture was determined among South Europeans and Near Eastern population too, this admixture was found to be younger compared to the Jewish populations. This findings the authors explained as evidence regarding common origin of these eight main Jewish groups. Quote, it is intriguing that the Mizrahi Irani and Iraqi Jews, who are thought to descend at least in part from Jews who were exiled to Babylon about 2,600 years ago share the signal of African admixture. A parsimonious explanation for these observations is that they reflect a history in which many of the Jewish groups descend from a common ancestral population which was itself admixed with Africans. Prior to the beginning of the Jewish diaspora that occurred in 8th to 6th century BC, the authors concludes. In 2012, two major genetic studies were carried out under the leadership of Harry Oster, from the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. The results were published in the Proceedings for the National Academy of Sciences. The genes of 509 Jewish donors from 15 different backgrounds and 114 non-Jewish donors of North African origin were analyzed. Ashkenazi, Sephardi, and Mizrahi Jews were found to be closer genetically to each other than to their long-term host populations, and all of them were found to have Middle Eastern ancestry, together with varying amounts of admixture in their local populations. Mizrahi and Ashkenazi Jews were found to have diverged from each other approximately 2,500 years in the past, approximately the time of the Babylonian exile. The studies also reconfirmed the results of previous studies which found that North African Jews were more closely related to each other and to European and Middle Eastern Jews than to their non-Jewish host populations. The genome-wide ancestry of North African Jewish groups was compared with respect to European Basque, Maghrebi Tunisian non-Jewish and Middle Eastern Palestinian origins. The Middle Eastern component is found to be comparable across all North African Jewish and non-Jewish groups, while North African Jewish groups showed increased European and decreased level of North African Maghrebi ancestry with Moroccan and Algerian Jews tending to be genetically closer to Europeans than DJ Urban Jews. The study found that Yemenite, Ethiopian, and Georgian Jews formed their own distinctive, genetically linked clusters. In particular, Yemenite Jews, who had been previously been believed to have lived in isolation, were found to have genetic connections to their host population, suggesting some conversion of local Arabs to Judaism had taken place. The study also found that Syrian Jews share more genetic commonality with Ashkenazi Jews than with other Middle Eastern Jewish populations. According to the study, Distinctive North African Jewish population clusters with proximity to other Jewish populations and variable degrees of Middle Eastern, European, and North African admixture. Two major subgroups were identified by principal component, neighbor joining tree, and identity by descent analysis Moroccan, Algerian, and DJ Urban, Libyan that varied in their degree of European admixture. These populations showed a high degree of endogamy and were part of a larger Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jewish group. By principal component analysis, these North African groups were orthogonal to contemporary populations from North and South Morocco, Western Sahara, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt. Thus, this study is compatible with the history of North African Jews. Founding during classical antiquity with proselytism of local populations, followed by genetic isolation with the rise of Christianity and then Islam, and admixture following the emigration of Sephardic Jews during the Inquisition. A 2012 study on Ethiopian Jews showed that while they are primarily related to the local populations, Ethiopian Jews have very distant genetic links to the Middle East from some 2,000 years ago, and are likely descended from a few Jewish founders. 
It was speculated that the community began when a few itinerant Jews settled in Ethiopia in ancient times, converted locals to Judaism, and married into the local populations. A 2012 study by Iran Elhaik analyzed data collected for previous studies and concluded that the DNA of Eastern and Central European Jewish populations indicates that their ancestry is a mosaic of Caucasus, European, and Semitic ancestries. For the study, Bedouin and Jordanian Hashemites, known to descend from Arabian tribes, were assumed to be a valid genetic surrogate of ancient Jews, whereas the Druze, known to come from Syria, were assumed to be non-Semitic immigrants into the Levant. Armenians and Georgians were also used as surrogate populations for the Khazars, who spoke a Turkic language unrelated to Georgian or Armenian. On this basis, a relatively strong connection to the Caucasus was proposed because of the stronger genetic similarity of these Jewish groups to modern Armenians, Georgians, Azerbaijani Jews, Druze and Cypriots, compared to a weaker genetic similarity with Hashemites and Bedouin. This proposed Caucasian component of ancestry was in turn taken to be consistent with the Khazarian hypothesis as an explanation of part of the ancestry of Ashkenazi Jews. A study by Haber et al. 2013 noted that while previous studies of the Levant, which had focused mainly on diaspora Jewish populations, showed that the Jews form a distinctive cluster in the Middle East, these studies did not make clear whether the factors driving this structure would also involve other groups in the Levant. The authors found strong evidence that modern Levant populations descend from two major apparent ancestral populations. One set of genetic characteristics which is shared with modern-day Europeans and Central Asians is most prominent in the Levant amongst Lebanese, Armenians, Cypriots, Druze and Jews, as well as Turks, Iranians and Caucasian populations. The second set of inherited genetic characteristics is shared with populations in other parts of the Middle East as well as some African populations. Levant populations in this category today include Palestinians, Jordanians, Syrians, as well as North Africans, Ethiopians, Saudis, and Bedouin. Concerning this second component of ancestry, the authors remark that while it correlates with the pattern of the Islamic expansion, and that a pre-Islamic expansion Levant was more genetically similar to Europeans than to Middle Easterners, they also say that its presence in Lebanese Christians, Sephardi and Ashkenazi Jews, Cypriots and Armenians might suggest that its spread to the Levant could also represent an earlier event." The authors also found a strong correlation between religion and apparent ancestry in the Levant. All Jews Sephardi and Ashkenazi cluster in one branch, Druze from Mount Lebanon and Druze from Mount Carmel are depicted on a private branch, and Lebanese Christians form a private branch with the Christian populations of Armenia and Cyprus placing the Lebanese Muslims as an outer group. The predominantly Muslim populations of Syrians, Palestinians and Jordanians cluster on branches with other Muslim populations as distant as Morocco and Yemen. A 2013 study by Doran M. Behar, Mate Metzpalu, Yael Baron, Nama M. Kopelman, Bayazit Yunyasbayev et al., using integration of genotypes on newly collected largest data set available to date 1,774 samples from 106 Jewish and non-Jewish populations for assessment of Ashkenazi Jewish genetic origins from the regions of potential Ashkenazi ancestry Sad Face, Europe, the Middle East, and the region historically associated with the Hazar Khaganate concluded that that. This most comprehensive study does not change and in fact reinforces the conclusions of multiple past studies, including ours and those of other groups Atzman and others, 2010, Bouchet and others, 2007, Behar and others, 2010, Campbell and others, 2012, Guha and others, 2012, Haber and others, 2013, Hen and others, 2012, Kopelman and others, 2009, Selden and others, 2006, Tien and others, 2008. We confirm the notion that the Ashkenazi, North African, and Sephardi Jews share substantial genetic ancestry and that they derive it from Middle Eastern and European populations, with no indication of a detectable Hazar contribution to their genetic origins. The authors also reanalyzed the 2012 study of Iran Elhaik, and found that 
the provocative assumption that Armenians and Georgians could serve as appropriate proxies for Hazar descendants is problematic for a number of reasons as the evidence for ancestry among Caucasus populations do not reflect Hazar ancestry." Also, the authors found that even if it were allowed that Caucasus affinities could represent Hazar ancestry, the use of the Armenians and Georgians as Hazar proxies is particularly poor, as they represent the southern part of the Caucasus region, while the Hazar Khaganate was centered in the North Caucasus and further to the north. Furthermore, among populations of the Caucasus, Armenians and Georgians are geographically the closest to the Middle East, and are therefore expected a priori to show the greatest genetic similarity to Middle Eastern populations. Concerning the similarity of South Caucasus populations to Middle Eastern groups, which was observed at the level of the whole genome in one recent study, Yuniusbayev and others, 2012, the authors found that. Any genetic similarity between Ashkenazi Jews and Armenians and Georgians might merely reflect a common shared Middle Eastern ancestry component, actually providing further support to a Middle Eastern origin of Ashkenazi Jews, rather than a hint for a Hazar origin." The authors claimed if one accepts the premise that similarity to Armenians and Georgians represents Hazar ancestry for Ashkenazi Jews, then by extension one must also claim that Middle Eastern Jews and many Mediterranean European and Middle Eastern populations are also Hazar descendants. This claim is clearly not valid, as the differences among the various Jewish and non-Jewish populations of Mediterranean Europe and the Middle East predate the period of the Khazars by thousands of years. Two 2014 studies by Paul and colleagues analyzed autosomal SNP data from FTDNA's Family Finder test for 100 study participants, divided into Jewish, non-Jewish, and interfaith study groups. It reported autosomal DNA test values, such as the size and number of shared DNA segments, the number of genetic matches, and the distribution of predicted relationships, varies between study groups. The study also investigates how shared autosomal DNA, and longest block values vary by strength of relationship for each study group. According to the results, the 40 participants in the Jewish study group were found to match an average of 24.8 or 62.0% of the other Jewish study participants, while the 40 participants in the non-Jewish study group matched an average of 4.0 or 9.9% of the other non-Jewish study participants. Hence, Jewish study participants had over six times more matches with each other than did non-Jewish study participants. With the exception of a single study participant, there were no matches between the Jewish and non-Jewish study groups. A 2014 study by Carmi et al., published by Nature Communications found that the Ashkenazi Jewish population originates from an even mixture between Middle Eastern and European peoples. According to the authors, that mixing likely occurred some 600 to 800 years ago, followed by rapid growth and genetic isolation rate per generation 16 to 53 percent winking face. The study found that all Ashkenazi Jews descend from around 350 individuals, about half of whom were Middle Eastern and half were European, and that all Ashkenazi Jews are related to the point of being no more than 30th cousins. The principal component analysis of common variants in the sequenced AJ samples, confirmed previous observations, namely, the proximity of Ashkenazi Jewish cluster to other Jewish, European and Middle Eastern populations. A 2016 study by Elhaik et al., in the Oxford University Press published journal Genome Biology and Evolution found that the DNA of Ashkenazi Jews originated in northeastern Turkey. The study found 90% of Ashkenazi Jews could be traced to four ancient villages in northeastern Turkey. The researchers speculated that the Ashkenazi Jews originated in the first millennium, when Iranian Jews converted Greco-Roman, Turkish, Iranian, Southern Caucasian, and Slavic populations inhabiting Turkey, and speculated that the Yiddish language also originated there among Jewish merchants as a cryptic language in order to gain advantage in trade along the Silk Road. In joint study published in 2016 by Genome Biology and Evolution, a group of geneticists and linguists from UK, Czech Republic, Russia, and Lithuania dismissed both the genetic and linguistic components of Elhaik's study. As for genetic component, the authors argued that using a genetic GPS tool 
would place Italians and Spaniards into Greece, all Tunisians and some Kuwaitis would be placed in the Mediterranean Sea, all Greeks were positioned in Bulgaria and in the Black Sea, and all Lebanese were scattered along a line connecting Egypt and the Caucasus. These cases are sufficient to illustrate that mapping of test individuals has nothing to do with ancestral locations." The authors wrote. As for linguistic component the authors stated. Yiddish is a Germanic language, leaving no room for the Slavic relaxification hypothesis and for the idea of early Yiddish-Persian contacts in Asia Minor. The study concluded that Yiddish is a Slavic language created by Irano Turco Slavic Jewish merchants along the Silk Roads as a cryptic trade language, spoken only by its originators to gain an advantage in trade. Das et al. 2016 remains an assertion in the realm of unsupported speculation. The study concluded, a 2016 study of Indian Jews from Bene Israel community by Waldman et al., found that the genetic composition of the community is, "...unique among Indian and Pakistani populations we analyzed in sharing considerable genetic ancestry with other Jewish populations." Putting together the results from all analyses point to Bene Israel being an admixed population with both Jewish and Indian ancestry, with the genetic contribution of each of these ancestral populations being substantial. The authors also examined the proportion and roots of the shared Jewish ancestry and the local genetic admixture. In addition, we performed F4 based analysis to test whether Bene Israel are closer to Jews than to non Jewish Middle Eastern populations. We found that Middle Eastern Jewish populations were closer to Bene Israel as compared to other Middle Eastern populations examined Druze, Bedouin and Palestinians. Non-Middle Eastern Jewish populations were still closer to Bene Israel as compared to Bedouin and Palestinians, but not as compared to Druze. These results further support the hypothesis that the non-Indian ancestry of Bene Israel is Jewish-specific, likely from a Middle Eastern Jewish population. Topic: <laughs> Comparison with the genetic inheritance of non-Jewish populations. Topic: <laughs> Levantines. Many genetic studies have demonstrated that most of the various Jewish ethnic divisions and Druze, Palestinians, Bedouin, Lebanese and other Levantines cluster near one another genetically. Many studies have found that Jews and Palestinians are closer to each other than the Palestinians or European Jews are to non-Jewish Europeans or Africans. They also found substantial genetic overlap between Israeli and Palestinian Arabs and Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews. A small but statistically significant difference was found in the Y chromosomal haplogroup distributions of Sephardic Jews and Palestinians, but no significant differences were found between Ashkenazi Jews and Palestinians nor between the two Jewish communities. However, a highly distinct cluster was found in Palestinian haplotypes. 32% of the 143 Arab Y chromosomes studied belonged to this INP Arab clade, which contained only one non Arab chromosome, that of a Sephardic Jew. This could possibly be attributed to the geographical isolation of the Jews or to the immigration of Arab tribes in the first millennium. The Druze people, a genetic sanctuary for the diversity of the Near East in antiquity, have been found in genetic studies to be the closest to Jews of the populations in the Levant. Lebanese also cluster closely with Jewish ethnic groups, closer than Syrians and Palestinians, according to a 2010 study by Behar et al. In contrast to the very close Jewish, Lebanese, and Druze grouping was the Palestinian grouping, which was closest to Saudis and Bedouin, suggesting significant ancestry from the Arabian Peninsula in contrast to the more Levantine stock of the former groups. The single archaeogenetic study of the Southern Levant Salomon et al., 2010, explored mtDNA haplogroups of Chalcolithic period from a cave in the Judean Desert. The prevailing mtDNA haplogroups were those in U3A, H and H6 haplogroup. U3 is quite frequent in contemporary mtDNA from Near Eastern and Levantine samples suggesting some temporal continuity in mtDNA haplogroups from as far back as the Chalcolithic era circa 4500-4000 BCE. In addition, the authors found that the U3A and H6 haplotypes from the ancient DNA samples were present in a broad range of contemporary Jewish populations. 
Topic Samaritans The Samaritans are an ancient northern population of historic Israel, where they are historically well identified since at least the 4th century BC. They define themselves as the descendants of tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh named after the two sons of Joseph living in the Kingdom of Israel before its destruction in 722 BC. For them, the Jews are the descendants of the Israelites from ancient southern Kingdom of Judah and Jerusalem. A 2004 study by Shen et al. compared the Y-DNA and DNA Mount Samaritans of 12 men with those of 158 men who were not Samaritans, divided between six Jewish populations Ashkenazi origin, Moroccan, Libyan, Ethiopian, Iraqi and Yemeni and two non-Jewish populations from Israel Druze and Arab. The study concludes that significant similarities exist between paternal lines of Jews and Samaritans, but the maternal lines differ between the two populations. The pair-wise genetic distances FST between 11 populations from AMOVA applied to the Y-chromosomal and mitochondrial data. For the Y-chromosome, all Jewish groups except for the Ethiopian Jews are closely related to each other and do not differ significantly from the Samaritans or Druze but are different from Palestinian Arabs Africans and Europeans this study indicated that the Samaritan and Jewish Y chromosomes have a much greater affinity for the other than for their geographical neighbors, the Palestinian Arabs. This suggests the two share a common ancestral Near Eastern population preceding their divergence in the 4th century BCE, supporting the Samaritan narrative of descent from native Israelites who survived the Assyrian exile rather than from foreign populations introduced by the Assyrian Empire. However, the mtDNA results did not match other Jewish populations at all, supporting the Jewish narrative of the Assyrians displacing the population of the northern Israelite kingdom. From these results the researchers concluded that the Samaritans are descended from Hebrew men and non-Hebrew women, confirming elements of both the Jewish and Samaritan narratives. A 2013 study by P. J. Efner, et al. found that Samaritans are descendants from the tribes of Israel dating to before the Assyrian exile in 722–720 BCE. In concordance with previously published single nucleotide polymorphism haplotypes, each Samaritan family, with the exception of the Samaritan Cohen lineage, was observed to carry a distinctive Y chromosome short tandem repeat haplotype that was not more than one mutation removed from the six marker Cohen modal haplotype. The authors concluded that Taken together, our results suggest that there has been gene flow between non-Samaritan females and the Samaritan population to a significantly greater extent than for males. The male lineages of the Samaritans, on the other hand, seem to have considerable affinity with those of the five non-Ethiopian Jewish populations examined here. These results are in accordance with expectations based on the endogamous and patrilineal marriage customs of the Samaritans and provide support for an ancient genetic relationship between Samaritans and Israelites. <laughs> Lembas The Lemba clans are scattered among the Bantu-speaking tribes in Zimbabwe and northern South Africa. Their oral tradition traces the origin of the Jewish lembas to Sana'a in Yemen. Some practices seem reminiscent of Jewish practices e.g. circumcision, food laws. Two studies have attempted to determine the paternal origin of these tribes. The first by A. Spertel and T. Jenkins dates from 1996 and suggests that more than half of lembas tested are of Semitic origin. The second study by Mark G. Thomas et al. dates from 2000 and also suggests that part of Lembas have a Semitic origin that can come from a mixture of Arabs and Jews. In addition, the authors show that clans Lemba Bubba clan has a large proportion of the former CMH. Recent research published in the South African Medical Journal studied Y chromosomes variations in two groups of Lemba, one South African and the other Zimbabwean the Remba. It concluded that while it was not possible to trace unequivocally the origins of the non-African Y chromosomes in the Lemba and Remba, this study does not support the earlier claims of their Jewish genetic heritage." The researcher suggested, "...a stronger link with Middle Eastern populations, probably the result of trade activity in the Indian Ocean." <laughs> Inhabitants of Spain, Portugal, and Ibero-America 
According to a 2008 study by Adams and colleagues the inhabitants of the Iberian Peninsula Spain and Portugal have an average of 20% Sephardi Jewish ancestry, with significant geographical variations ranging from 0% on Menorca to 36.3% in southern Portugal. According to the authors, part of this admixture might also be of Neolithic, Phoenician or Arab Syrian origin. Modern-day Ibero-American populations have also shown varying degrees of Sephardic Jewish ancestry. New Christian converso Iberian settler ancestors of Sephardic Jewish origin. Ibero-Americans are largely the result of admixture between immigrants from Iberia, indigenous peoples of the Americas, and sub-Saharan African slaves, as well as other Europeans and other immigrants. An individual's specific mixture depends on their family genealogy. A significant proportion of immigrants from Iberia, Spain, and Portugal hid their Sephardic Jewish origin. Researchers analyzed two well-established communities in Colorado, 33 unrelated individuals, and Ecuador, 20 unrelated individuals, with a measurable prevalence of the BRCA1 C.185 Delog and the GHRC E180 mutations, respectively thought to have been brought to these communities by Sephardic Jewish progenitors. Closing square bracket. When examining the presumed European component of these two communities, we demonstrate enrichment for Sephardic Jewish ancestry not only for these mutations, but also for other segments as well. These findings are consistent with historical accounts of Jewish migration from the realms that comprise modern Spain and Portugal during the Age of Discovery. More importantly, they provide a rationale for the occurrence of mutations typically associated with the Jewish diaspora in Latin American communities. See also Archaeogenetics of the Near East Ashkenazi Jewish intelligence Falasha Genetic history of North Africa Genetic studies on Arabs Genetic history of Europe Indian Jews Jewish ethnic divisions Jewish history Jewish studies Hazar theory Medical genetics of Jews Y-DNA haplogroups by ethnic groups Notes References Topic. Further reading Abu el Hajj, Nadia. The, 26th of April 2012. the Genealogical Science The Search for Jewish Origins and the Politics of Epistemology. University of Chicago Press. ISBN 978 0 226 20140 5. Fock, Raphael, Zionut Vihabiologia Shel Hayahudim Zionism and the Biology of the Jews, Tel Aviv, Riesling, 2006 not yet available in English Oster, Harry. Legacy, A Genetic History of the Jewish People, Oxford University Press, 2012 Need, Anna C., Kasparovichut, Dahlia, Ceruli, Elizabeth T., Goldstein, David B. 2009. A genome-wide genetic signature of Jewish ancestry perfectly separates individuals with and without full Jewish ancestry in a large random sample of European Americans. Genome Biology 101 R7 DOI 10.1186 GB the 1st of October 2009 R7 ISSN 1465 to 6906 PMC 2,687,795. PMID 19,161,619. Topic. External links. DNA links prove Jews are a race, says genetics expert. Haritz, May 7, 2012. Retrieved November 30, 2013. Paul S. Applebaum, the 12th of February 2008. Genetics and the Jewish Identity. Jerusalem Post. Retrieved the 25th of September 2009. Wade, Nicholas, January 14, 2006. New Light on Origins of Ashkenazi in Europe. The New York Times. Retrieved the 24th of May 2006. Steve Olson, July August 2007. Who's your daddy? The Atlantic. 
retrieved the 19th of February 2009. Priestly gene shared by widely dispersed Jews. American Society for Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, July 14, 1998. John Entine, Jewish DNA, Genetic Research and the Origins of the Jewish People. Retrieved the 11th of October 2013.